For me, I mean, everybody play basketball in the hood. Like, everybody. Yeah. Even when they don't Facts. play basketball, they play basketball. People be out there in their tans playing basketball. Yeah. You know, basketball's the New York shit I've yeah. ever heard. They right. black, and they black Air Force. <laughs> and they black Air Force. Not the black Air Force. Not the, yes. I know. No. You can't, 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 you wear, you can't wear the white ones. Not you the criminal. Know. Can't wear the white ones. With a jumper. That's exactly how it be. Come out there playing gel ball. That's how I learned how to, like, play so, like, tough. It's yeah. just, like, they get out there and they knocking you around yeah. and whatnot. But, like, no, like, I started basketball. I didn't play on a team until sixth grade. Mm, so, right. until I was 11. And I've just been going since. Meanwhile, That's four dope. years later, here come my <laughs> right. Six, five, and 14 years old. Listen. <laughs> and I remember, like, I played in middle school. I was on a boys team, but my dad never let me go to a game. So, I used to go to practice every day. And every Saturday, I'd be like, can I go to a game? He'd be like, no. What? And I, yeah, he never let me go. It, it makes sense because the first game and the only game I played for the boys basketball team in seventh grade, I broke my ankle. Okay. Uh, so he knew. <laughs> he knew. He knew. He knew. <laughs> <laughs> so you ain't play basketball for you? Nah, that's why I didn't play the high school. The first game I played. Yeah, wow. that's the same way. When I broke my hand, I literally didn't even know I broke it. Like I'm like over to the how athlete you trainer. That? Huh? How I, you don't know that? How you break your leg? <laughs> And how old were you? Because we're, we're on first questions. games. <laughs> we're on first game stories right now. <laughs> What do you think the game needs to, to grow and get more competitive? More competitive? Yeah. Yo, mm -hmm. so these kids is different for real. Yeah. yeah. Like, I like I hate hearing that stupid rim conversation. Mm -hmm. Cause especially because these kids is dunking in games now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even though I don't think I think dunking is not, it's not as exciting to me as people like to make it seem. But I get like the fan excitement of it all. Mm -hmm. But these kids are like just the way social media has moved and the swag these kids got, they really be out here thinking they somebody having a following. And I think just the more we see these kids playing younger and, and having organized places for girls to play basketball, like mm -hmm. I had to play the boys scene. Mm -hmm. Now it, that's unheard of now. So seeing these kids really just be out here and playing, it does, we, like the game is developing. These kids, they are different. I mean, the athletic ability that they have mm -hmm. is through the roof. You know, I, I came up as an athletic player and then to see what they're doing, you know, even um, exceeding that, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. For sure. Right? I, was, I was lucky enough to have played on a girls team all the way through, but I know some of my counterparts, that wasn't a, that wasn't a thing. I mean, if we continue on that trajectory, you're gonna see some amazing basketball. Um, but you know, with, with social media, yeah, I mean, you're able to showcase your abilities to the world at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, like coming up, that wasn't a thing for, oh. for me, right? I had you one had highlight to, tape. To, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one highlight tape, and you had to travel all over the country just so people could see you. Yeah. That was the only way you was going to be seen. All right, so now you have the ability to put out a highlight tape every week if you want to. and Every everyone, day, honestly. Yeah. Just put the, the workout and, videos and everything. And exactly. Yeah. But what I don't want them to fall uh, victim to is thinking that that's enough. Yes. Right? To be an elite player. Yeah. Right? That's not enough because you still got to come. You still got to come with the bag. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You still, you still got to come with the grit. You still got to come with that competitive nature. Right? Because you can have all the skill you want, but if you lack the competitive nature, right, mm -hmm. then it, it doesn't mean anything. But how is that competitive nature when you're looking at another dog that's standing in front of you? Mm -hmm. Right? Someone that gets down just like you or even more. That's something that you can't teach. No, you gotta have that inside of you. So I don't. I just don't want them to lose sight of that because it's not always the glitz and glam. The yeah, game, that's yeah. not. That's not. The, that's not all the game is. Yeah. There are other elements to the game, and I don't want that part to to be taken away from our game on the women's side. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know what I mean, so you you take that competitive nature and you add it with their athletic ability mm -hmm. that they have now and the skill level that they're coming in, in into the game with. They coming in there, Euro, Stephanie, Shelly Fan, Exactly, they got all of that. 
So, but you put all the different pieces together, you're going to have a, man, it's going to be crazy. Looking at basketball 10 years from now, it's going to be real different. You, you graduated fairly recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you know, you know I'm in the 30s now, but um, just, just tell us about how it is to be right there in the, the intersection of everything driving you from social versus everything in person, and you have to really, like, scout you out. Yeah, so like you said, like, the best of both worlds, like, based off of what Essence was saying with social media, I do think that a lot of young people, you know, nowadays, they are thinking that they, just because they have the hype, mm -hmm. that that's enough for them. And I, like I said, I don't want them to get caught up in that either. I didn't get caught up I'm in saying, it. How did you not? I didn't think that that was going to get me to where I wanted to be. Like, just because I put on a video of me working out or just because, you know, I'm making a big highlight tape for myself. Like, I didn't think that coaches would want to see that. They want to see what you are doing and bring it to the court. Like, that's the main thing. Social media is going to come, it's going to go, but I always have, like she said, the dog in me. Yeah, and as we've seen the popularity go, because obviously we're on social media now, you get to see the players grow from, like, now high, middle school to high school to college um, to the leagues. What's next for the popularity of women's basketball? Oh, man, it's going to be crazy. I mean, now people are so supportive of women's sports, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're, you're getting your, our counterparts, you know, giving us the proper love. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it, it's crazy because you never really want to rely on someone else's, you know what I'm saying, acknowledgement of what you do to define it's visibility, do, though. But it is for sure. visibility. For sure. Right? That's just, the, that's just the reality of the world we live in right now. So the fact that now we have our counterparts, they're on board, they, they know bowls when they see one. Mm -hmm. They know real hoopers when they see one. That's for sure. And, you know, just having them on board has done a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's helped move the needle, right? We were always championing for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But clearly that wasn't enough over the years, right? We needed someone else, yeah. all right? Just like on any, in any other fight, right? When you think of, like, the oppressed, the oppressed, you think the oppressed just, just started t yeah. standing up for themselves? <laughs> They've been standing up for yeah. themselves, right? It's the other people that matter that need to join the conversation to act, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's, it, it applies to us. You're seeing the beginning of that. And it's, man, what's going to come for these young ladies, the next generation, it's going to be amazing. I want to see people get those million dollar deals, yeah. two yeah. million. Stateside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. The it's, NIL. It's, going, it's coming. <laughs> and even now, like right now, they were talking about the rankings in the NIL, women's basketball second to yeah. football. Yeah. And then so, eight of the top ten most lucrative athletes were... were yeah. Women's. So I, I think um, access has always been my thing. Mm -hmm. Access. As I always say that women's basketball fans are, are always on a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to tell me that we could sell out arenas in the women's Final Four, but then the WNBA, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. That's not how that works. It's yeah. the fact that we, it's hard to find WNBA games. Mm -hmm. I don't own Channel 1127. <laughs> I can't, I can't that watch part. it. That part. <laughs> like, so that's one of the biggest things I love about this league is that every game is streamed. Yeah. Because I think it isn't about not having the fan base so much as it is about everybody ain't trying to fight to do something. Yeah. You know, like, I think we've always struggled with the casual fans. It's like, oh, what's going mm -hmm. on this weekend? Mm -hmm. I want to go do this. And that's the thing. You can't escape the NBA. Yeah. You can't escape the NFL. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, I know nothing about football, but I know who that old man that ain't retired is. <laughs> like, I know <laughs> them people because there's no way to escape it. Yeah, like, I mean, you, you walk in, that, in any place and you see it streaming. Exactly. Like, so yeah. when we get to that point with women's basketball mm -hmm. where I can't escape it, so I think that's always been the, the hurdle that we've been trying to overcome is just proving that we have the buy-in and asking people to give it to us. Yeah. Like, AU, that's, this is the buy-in we asking for. The bubble season, we saw the buy-in from ESPN. So I think that's been our biggest thing. And so as long as we have access, there is no question about the game because we know the fan base is there. We know people love to see it. And then also just, you know, when we have little, when you have a little girl that wants to play basketball, your whole mindset changed. Yeah. I may have hated the WNBA, always talk crap, but now my little daughter want to do that. Yeah. How, how am I changing the way I'm talking about these things, right? How am I, how am I changing how I, how I speak about women's sports when I have a daughter that wants to play sports? Mm -hmm. I can't tell her to look up to a man. That's not fair to her. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the things that, that are changing as, as time progresses. Yeah, it's a shift in the paradigm, man. And we're watching it, you know, right before our eyes right now. But, like, the buy-in, the access, that's big. So not only are y'all saying the money needs to be invested in it, but the visibility yeah. as well. And yeah, and that's also something that social media has brought us, right? The mm -hmm. fact that... Now we have highlighter, right? We have, we have, okay. <laughs> you know, we got W Slam, yeah. and we have all these different avenues where you can tap in with the youth, and you can tap in, and you know, these kids, is phones in their hand all day. All day. So being able to tap in with their favorite players changes the game. 100%. And so I know that a lot of times players say, I want to leave it 
better than I got here. So what will cause the next generation to walk into something that's better? Mentorship. Just having players like us, vets, you know, talking to them and, and telling them really, like, the path to go. You know, I think that a lot of people need that guidance, you know, as young athletes. Like, you need someone in your ear that's been there, really Who's been moving forward. Uh, a lot of people, but mainly Chastity Melvin. Uh, Chaz. Chaz. Yeah. You know, yeah. Seriously. She, yeah. Even to this day, she's still in my ear, you yeah. know. So I needed that. I needed that push. That's what got me here, honestly. So I'm grateful for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about you guys? What do you think the next generation could benefit from? Man, I, I agree. Um, definitely mentorship. Um, and continue to, to like take a stand, right? Don't ever let anyone devalue you because they'll they'll try to do it. Yeah. They'll try to keep fighting for your work. I've seen the league from 13, 14 years ago, and the things that people let slide then are not the things that we let slide now. Yesterday's price is not I love it. Price. I love it. You keep that mantra, we're going to show up to the party. Mm -hmm. We're going to be dressed mm -hmm. to the nines, you know what I'm saying? We're going to come with the skill. We come with the product. Mm -hmm. Now, don't be afraid to stand up for that product and keep pushing that. And then you, you add that with the mentorship, mm -hmm. they'll be in good hands. And I think that you guys play with love, right? You play mm -hmm. for the love of the game. So when was your love for the game strongest? I was a slow to come to basketball. Mm -hmm. So I, obviously I started playing later in, in life, but I grew up around ball. My mom was in the WNBA. My brother, I watched him play coming up. My mm -hmm. aunt was in the WNBA. So I've always been around this game. Like I remember driving to Houston to go watch the comments and my aunt was on the team, right? So I I was at the game Lisa dunked mm -hmm. at Staples. Oh no you know? way! Yeah, that's like, dope. Hey. <laughs> yeah, in this thing. Right. So, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. I was watching it. You know, like I, like the WNBA is the same age as me, so I grew up with this. So I, I think for me it was very much like I get to watch it and I get to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And then when I got drafted mm -hmm. and my mom was there and I'm the first WNBA player to have a mom that's in the WNBA. That's and then so fire. Coming home and playing in Staples where I had come and watched my brother play, where yes. I got to watch Lisa play. And I'm, I came on my first game in Staples. I'm running out the tunnel and I got people there I ain't seen since I was in middle school, elementary school. That was my moment. Like, mm. I, I'm, I'm literally getting emotional thinking about it. Yeah. Like, that was my moment playing in the freaking Staples Center. And then to go on and finish my rookie season playing against two of the players I looked up to, Neca and Candace, in my hometown. Like, that, those were the moments where I was like, dang, like, I'm really doing this. That's the moment I was like, I'm a pro. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, all of this, like, this is it. You know what I mean? So, like, that, that was, like, everything for me. I think it's two moments for me, right? Um, the first one, I went to a game at MSG, watched the Liberty. Uh, man, and I told my mom, I'm like, Yo, I'm gonna play here one day. Mm -hmm. Dang, and then you fast forward, mm -hmm. and I ended up playing it for yeah. playing it in for the G is amazing for you many did. years, <laughs> for, 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 for some for some years. Yeah. So that was the first time I realized. Now the second time is more recently, mm -hmm. right? And uh, when you, I've taken, I haven't played a game, like a real professional game since the bubble, which was in 2020. We are now in 2022. So, but throughout this whole time, I wasn't just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. I was recovering for, from some injuries. It really was a test of how much do you really love this game, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you have it in you to, to fight back through this? But like this journey, this over this past 14, 15 months, it's been tough because it's kind of like, this is a test of how much you love it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm like, I love this shit. Bruh. I, 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 I love it. And you, you feel the love, you feel the love through the pain that you experienced throughout that whole, throughout that whole journey. Cause you realize, damn, I love this that damn much. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna play. Yeah. I'm gonna play in AU and I'm gonna play in the summer. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep yeah. playing. Keep you pushing. Know what I'm sure. You know what I mean? Kind of like similar to her, like, you know, after like injuries or like, you know, having those moments where you're like, do I really still want to play? Like, I think mine was most recent where I really was like, I love, I love playing. And it was when I went to the Phoenix Mercury training camp. Mm -hmm. Now, did I make the team? No. But the whole opportunity of it was so, like, it was the best experience for me. Be playing alongside Diana and, mm -hmm. you know, Skylar, it was like, you're on my wall at home, you know? <laughs> like, and that was my moment for me, like, because I had those friendships and things that was created during the training camp, I was like, I love basketball. Yeah. I love how it could take me all around the world, mm -hmm. how it can, 
I just love it, honestly. I don't even know what else to say. But when there's love, when there's that much passion behind it, you know, you have injuries, you have certain disdain, resentment. Was there any time you were like, I hate this? Oh, all day. Overseas. Uh, you hate the politics of it. <laughs> yeah, right? for sure. You, you, you hate the politics of it. You, people can, can tell you that it doesn't exist. It exists, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's business. Mm -hmm. It's part of, name one business that doesn't have any politics. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's hard when you grew up as an amateur, right, you don't have that business aspect added to the game. So you just playing pure love. There's nothing that's, that's affecting it, right? That That's how your relationship with basketball is. Mm -hmm. And then you transition into, as a, into a professional career, and it tests you mm -hmm. right, as a person, your character, you know? It's not always all smiles. For sure. It, it, it's not. For you sure. know, it's not always all smiles. Sure. Um, so to me, that that part right there is just like, oh yeah, that's that's real. That's that's part of the game. You can't leave that part out. And then when I talk to some of the younger players and they have their first experience with it, it's like they want to fall apart. Yeah. They mm -hmm. they like it hurts them. And I'm like, you got to teach them. You got to you got to tell them like, look, this is a part of the game. All right, don't just stop playing. That's not the answer. You learn how to move. Right? Like Jay said, you learn how to move in a room full of vultures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. You got to, it, it's not only in basketball. So if you decide to walk away from it because of that, you're going to be walking away from a lot of opportunities in life. You're going to be walking away a lot. You're going to be walking a lot. He's a trans. That's right. It's, it's, life, it's life lessons in all of this, man. Yeah. It's, it's not. Outside of what you learn within those four lines, you could take out into the world world mm -hmm. how you deal with coaches, how you deal with gyms, how you deal with players, how you deal with teammates, how you deal with opponents, how you deal with the media. It, I'm telling you, you got to learn how to navigate through all of that. And that's why I feel like vets should step up more. Yeah. You got to yeah. talk, man. Speak up. Don't look at it as a threat because this young, this young player coming up in here, it's not a threat. I'm comfortable with who I am as a person and as a player. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever mind helping somebody. So I've seen people, they, they are like super threatened by some of the younger talent yeah. that's coming in and they don't want to help. They might not say anything. They might not, like, yo, you see this person struggling, yo, like, give them some pointers. You've been there. Like, yeah. yo, that's, that doesn't take anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you should be coming to the table confident anyway. Okay. So now, yeah. so Shorty, your insecurity is showing right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Think Honestly, exactly what she's saying. I think um, for me, like learning how to advocate for myself, one, was a mm -hmm. big thing because it is a business, mm -hmm. right? So uh, some coaches, they need to know you. They need to understand. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not really I'm not really a key key with you. I'm going to come do my work and go home. I didn't grow up in a, in a world where my parents called if I didn't play. My parents never talked to my coaches. Mm -hmm. So I, ain't, I didn't grow up in that environment. So for me, when I got to the league, I'm like, I'm doing my work. I don't got to talk to my coach. I don't need to have my agent call my coach. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is doing that. Everybody else having sit downs and, mm -hmm. and they got the Asian blowing their coach up. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like everything, I'm, I'm coming up early, I'm, I'm leaving last. I'm doing all my work. Why I gotta do all the other stuff? But I had to change that because in this environment, I needed to do more. You have to mm -hmm. move to get to what you need to Exactly. Get to. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, I had to understand that sometimes I could do as much as I can, but this ain't mine. I've been mm -hmm. in situations where there's been a trade and the person in my position has to be great. Regardless of whether she may actually be great, but she has to have the opportunity to be great because this trade has to make sense. And that's at my detriment, right? And so when that first happened, I'm, I'm soaking, I'm young. I'm like, man, nah, I know I'm worth something else. Let me get a trade. Probably should have never asked for that trade out of Chicago. That's something I learned yeah. in hindsight, right? Yeah. Because I probably could have sat past that coach and made it through. And Chicago loved me, GM loved me, all of that. You know, but that's like, that's a learning lesson, right? And even then, like, and you see me play, I'm the loudest one on the bench whether I'm playing or not. That's me. That's my character. Mm -hmm. And I've done that and been like, man, am I doing this so my coach could be like, remember, I'm here? <laughs> like, <laughs> am I doing that so yeah. everybody be like, dang, money? Nah, that's who I am. Yeah. I, like, at the end of the day, I love competition, so I want you to be your best because I'm trying to eat. Yeah. Right? Like, I like that. I, like, I'm going to help you do it. You don't know how to play? Cool. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to do all that regardless of whether I'm playing or not. Right? Like, my last couple years in, in the city I was in, I was a coach. <laughs> like, well, they were all your listen, children. Listen, <laughs> I was a fifth very coach. young. What you mean? But like, young. I realized like, I'm doing this for me because that's mm -hmm. how I enjoy it. If I can't play, then I'm going to enjoy it by making sure everybody around me is better. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the hard moments where you got to realize like every time in the game, you're not going to get the joy from being a leading scorer. Mm -hmm. I've never been an MVP in this league. I've never been, I've never been a starter, mm -hmm. maybe my rookie year, but I haven't been a consistent 30-minute player ever in my career. Mm -hmm. And I may never get to that. But I got to figure out how do I enjoy this when I come to work? How do I do this? Why do I do this? Right? Like, I haven't played a professional game since January 2019. 
coming back to ball to be able to do this, like, and even coming here, I remember, like, my family was like, yo, we proud of you because we could see your attitude different. Because when you first started working out, you was like, nah, dog, let me go study. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, it's cool. So I think for you always going to have that love-hate moment because nothing is great at all times. Mm -hmm. But you got to figure out why you're doing it and what brings joy even in the adversity. Mm -hmm. But I, there was like two things. <laughs> there were two instances that did test my character, and I and I've had I played every role that you could possibly play as a professional basketball player, right? I've been a scorer, I've been a defender, I've been person that's just gonna big you up. I've been I've had all types of roles, um, two times. One time, a person, you know, I, I try to do the little sit down, You're professional, <laughs> super professional, right? I try to do this, the little sit down, coach didn't have an answer for me. So I'm just like, all right, cool, whatever. You're just doing, you just doing what you want to do, and that's mm -hmm. fine. You have the ability to do that. All right, I'm gonna go over here. The second time this happened, the coach was like, "You didn't do anything wrong." Yep. That was said to me, I've had those and I'm like, "How? Like, okay, so wait." <laughs> so why we, so why we <laughs> having this? this it don't make sense. <laughs> why we having this conversation? So like... you sitting here telling me that I didn't do anything wrong? and this is just what you want to do. That doesn't really make sense. Wow. I had um, a younger player ask me, it was, they, uh, it was time for them to like um, step out of their rookie contract and you know, now they can go wherever they want and they, they, they asked for my advice. And I told them, go where you're wanted yep. at the end of the day. Cool. Even if it's, look, at the, especially for us, our game, we're not making millions of dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. So go where you want it because that's where you're gonna have the opportunity to play to showcase your talent so then you can possibly have that opportunity to, to play is gonna open so many so many doors for you because when you feel like, hey, they want me here, mm -hmm. you will perform better. Yep. And I'm sure that they feel much better about their life. I haven't even spoken to them after that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just dropped that. Dog. Where it be? Where it be? I like dropped that little gym and I just kept it moving because sometimes people need to hear that. Yeah. Don't, don't hear like, oh, just stick it out, just stick it out no, for what? No, for it's what? Just, we know. Know. And that's another thing <laughs> people forget, that the where you are fit matters. Yes. People always like, oh, I want to get drafted two, I want to get drafted one, I want to do this. You getting drafted one to a player to play your position and it's an all-star. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, people think that it's, it's about talent. And it's not always about talent, because when you get to this point, everybody's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about fit. Mm -hmm. I fit in this system. Yeah. It makes sense for me to play in this system, because I'm a transition player to see transition. It don't make sense for me to come and play for a team that likes to bang the ball in the mm -hmm. post, and I hate being back to the basket. You know what I mean? So, like, fit matters as well. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you could be the best player on that team, but you don't fit with the way the coach play. And that's it. <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's, that's the game. When you yeah. have the ability to choose, Look at these systems that you're going into. Don't yeah. just go because the city nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was oh, literally going to say college. Kids. I was going to bring it. Like, yeah. It's yeah. the same thing. Like, they're like, oh, a lot of players don't need a transfer. But it's like, if they're not happy there and they're not playing, like, yeah, go somewhere else. Like, I'm glad that the portal is, like, opening now to where they can go to different schools without having to sit, sit out a year or two yeah. years or things like that. Like, that's just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't like a college that I'm at, why do I have to sit out and use up four of my years just to play at another school that I will actually be happy at, you know? But as far as like the overseas part, you never know really what you're getting into when you're signing up for it, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> so yeah. You gotta reach out to people that play for the team. Yeah, you like, you're like, like damn yeah. people, common yeah. people, like, yo, you play for this team, you played in this city, because they can, like, give you all of these, oh, we'll give you this, we'll be here, like, beautiful city, and you get there, and you, you probably have, like, a one-bedroom studio that's in, you know, <laughs> like literally, like Can we I don't pack this. <laughs> no, <laughs> just came it. back. Not you got the, the, you the postcard pictures. You got it. Yeah, you can, you can ask anybody. <laughs> I'm telling you, they be man, they be pulling the wool over your eyes every really? time. Yeah. man, look, I haven't been overseas since 2017, I guess. The, the 2016 to 2017 season, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's me. I did what I was supposed to do. Yeah. We won the championships. We did what we were supposed to do. I'm, 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 I'm good on that mm -hmm. because the reason why is like they demand so much of you, oh, right? Okay. And they don't, they don't reciprocate that, mm -hmm. right? Look, we know what we signing up for when we go over there. When we talking about, oh, like, all right, they want you to, you know, what I'm saying be the leading scorer. They want you yeah. to help the team win. Mm -hmm. So if I'm helping this t team win, what are you doing for me? Exactly. This is a business, right? It's supposed to be a trade-off. Yeah. So you treat me like there's some oh. slavery. But don't let you lose a game 
(laughs) (laughs) You shouldn't have to be asking. You shouldn't have to ask for the bare essentials. Like, we grown. Mm -hmm. Why are you putting somebody in a studio? (laughs) That's why you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why, when you show up, the internet don't work? Oh, what? (laughs) You knew I was coming through my Oh, we got it. We got it. Oh, next week, next week, they close, they close. Oh, they close? They close all week? Nah, bro, they not closed all week. I mean, I've been fortunate enough not to have to experience like like those super late payments. But oh, still, me, still waiting. So if you showed up to work, you done did a whole month's worth of work, right? Uh-huh. And then they don't pay you. And we're not even talking about basketball. We just talking about everyday Your job. Business. Everyday <laughs> job. Just showing up to work. After that 31st day, right? On the 32nd day, are you showing up to work? No. Not. Exactly. All right, so why you mad that I don't show up to work? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Why you, oh, we uh, we going to cut her. Ready to send me home. Go ahead. Goodbye. Because I'm not out here working for free. Do you understand? I'm thousands of miles away from my family. You here in your city comfortable mm-hmm. eating the food that you like, reading the menu easily, <laughs> oh. not asking Look, for a I'm over here like, I just like, came back from <laughs> Just came back from <laughs> And you over here talking about, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 <laughs> wait. We'll have it. She got to do it. She got to do it. She got to do the accent. Like, no, bro, I'm not waiting. <laughs> I'm not waiting. I'm advocating for myself, and now you getting pissed because I'm advocating for myself. For sure. mm-hmm. No, that's not how that works. Yeah. That's that's in, that's damn near inhumane. Like, yeah. bro, you bugging. Yeah, that's why I'm so. <laughs> everybody, come on. That's yeah. what I'm telling. I'm gonna come home. Leave. That's why I'm glad that you guys have athletes on the Yes. Player, yes. Player, player, player focus thing. You know, y'all, y'all worst mean. case scenario, an athlete is eliminated. You can go home with nine bands, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that's playing this league ain't making that overseas. Yeah. You know what I mean, they ain't touching that. They, or they haven't got to that point in their career they could do that, or they have mm-hmm. they passed that point in their career. So like you know, like just just the fact of it being able being able to do that here, regardless, of, no bonuses, just showing up. That's what you get. That's that's dope to yeah. be to be stateside for five know? weeks too. Like, yeah, no, yeah, that's like six months. That's amazing. Like you said, making that. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. amazing. Like everybody's not able to do those things overseas, right? And even then, like you're in your own environment. We're in Vegas. You know what I mean? Like you, your family can come to the game. So it's a beautiful opportunity, and hopefully, it continues. At what point did you start playing basketball for something bigger than yourself? Ooh, that's good. Man, I would say the day I got drafted. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. Just being an example that, hey, you can come from Patterson, you can make it anywhere. You can come from Patterson, you can travel the world. You can come from Patterson, you can make a bag. You can come from Patterson, you can do whatever your heart desires, you can do it. Um, So the moment I became a professional at this, I'm like, yeah, I need to do this the right way to show them that they can do it. Mm-hmm. Because growing up, I didn't really have that. You know what I mean? Like, I had to look up to just like a bunch of guys on the sports side of things as far as, you know, um, the professional athletes that made it from my city. Um, so just just being um, the light for those young ladies, just showing them that it's the way, even if you don't talk to them. It doesn't really matter. When you live your life right, and you I'm do it. preach right now? <laughs> 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 Not when you live your life right. Like, you are automatically an, insp- an inspiration to, mm-hmm. to people, even if you don't know them. Man, despite the opportunities that they may lack, you show them that you can create your own opportunity. People need to see people that look like them mm-hmm. do the things that they aspire to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like we always talking about representation, you know, having a seat at the table. That's what everything. When you have that representation, you see someone that looks like you at the table, Sitting at the table, you like, oh, it's like when you come to lunch for the first time at a school, it's like, oh, I could sit there too. Mm-hmm. That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're trying to find a table that you can fit at. Yeah. And where do you go? You go to the table where it's people that look, look like, like they come mm-hmm. vibe with you, look like you. Yeah. It's the same thing. So when I became a professional, I told myself, like, yo, just do it the right way. Don't don't ever falter. People are gonna try to push you to to either side. Nah, you walk that line you wanna walk. Thanks. I was going to say, when I was in college, you know, I'm going to bring up NC State again. Okay. You know, play for K. <laughs> that's when I knew, like, I was playing for something bigger. Mm. Seeing the gym packed, the arena packed with cancer survivors, having that before you step on the court, and, like, they talk about this when you first are recruited there. You know, they're like, you know, K was a great coach, and we're going to keep these principles, you know, throughout your whole career. And you're just, like, thinking, like, she really did... She really was a coach while fighting cancer, you know, and still being like a mother figure to all of the players and just hearing like former alumni like talking about her. Like, I'm like, wow, like when I put on this NC State jersey and it has Inspire on the back, things like that, like I'm like, yeah, this is way bigger than me.
Thanks you for bringing back the legacy of North Carolina State. Um, that's about, anyways, Imani. Uh, for me, <laughs> like, I believe my life purpose is create safe spaces, right? So in everything I do, that's like in my, the forefront of my mind. And I figured out a very long time ago that people care what I gotta say because I play basketball. Like the work I wanna do in the world, right? Like in every room I come into, I talk about mental health, I talk about sexual violence because I'm bipolar and I'm a survivor of sex, childhood sexual abuse, right? So in everything I do, that those, those are things that come with me. That's my story, right? And I realize that people only care because I play basketball. And that's not like a shot, that's just people care. That's I have the this, reality of it. Yeah, I had this platform, I had people, I got mics in my face because I play ball. So in order for me to do the, the th what I believe I'm here to do, I have to play basketball. I have some sort of affiliation with it. So when I figured that out, this game became a lot more easier. I, it didn't really, I didn't really care if I, all, the, all the minuscule stuff of minutes and, and the petty locker room drama didn't matter to me no more because I'm like, oh, I'm here for something way bigger than that. I always meet somebody that has either been through it, going through it, or has never been able to speak about it. Mm. So for me, I'm like, yo, I'm not in active danger. I have this platform and I have the ability to articulate in a way that people understand. So I think it's, it's I'm doing myself, the younger version of myself, a, disfa a disservice by not talking. I'm doing people that will never ever be able to tell their story a disservice by not talking. Mm. Like my goal in life is to be who I needed when I was younger, to create a world where the younger me will feel loved, valued, and protected. So in everything I do, that's what I do. What are tips that you can, you know, have for setting boundaries and have you ever just not wanted to be that role model? I don't think about not wanting to be the role model. Mm -hmm. This is what I signed up for. When I said I wanted to change the world, look, this is what came my way, basketball came my way, and uh, it's a platform. Like Imani said, you use it. Mm -hmm. It'll be a disservice to yourself not to use that platform to push the world forward, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna continue to push the game forward. We're, we're bred to do that. We, we're trained warriors to, like, we're trained to do that, right? So that's not gonna stop. So what else can you do? What else are you bringing to the table? What else are you bringing to dinner? You know what I'm saying? Who am I just to be like, yeah, nah, I don't feel like dealing with that today. You handle your own problems. Look, man, heavy is the head that bears the crown. Ooh, talk you bad. feel me? So if you wanna do be great, this is what comes with it. You know, all the different points of the crown, Role models, one of them little points. <laughs> <laughs> you just take it and just sit down. Nah, brother, you sign up for the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's plenty of pl people that, that say that. Like, yeah, oh, man. I didn't sign up to be a role model. Yeah. Uh, it came with the job, bro. Right? right. It, it came with the job description. I agree. You, how are you just going to be like, nah, I don't want to do it? Mm -hmm. But then maybe you should do this. Ooh, maybe you should be on this platform. Yeah. Go play at the park. Somebody else. Go play, play at the park. park. Go play at uh, the park, bro. <laughs> you don't want to play at the park, though. You don't uh, want to play at the park. No. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with Essence. Like, I'm not ever going to not speak up about what I believe in. You know, a lot of people view athletes as superheroes. So they yeah. think that we don't have that trauma or that we've never been through anything because they just see us playing basketball, you know? So I, I love that you speak up, you know, about what you believe in and things like that. You know, I also deal with, like, mental health problems that I'm facing now that I want people to know that they're not alone. You know, like, we're all human at the end of the day. We all, like, put on our shoes and we lace it the same way. You know, so, like, I want them to know that I'm going to speak up for you because you can't. Yeah. Before we move on, though, I just want to, I just want to say one thing. Mm -hmm. When you said mental health problems, I think you should relanguage that because it's not a problem. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think we need to relanguage how For we talk sure. about stigma. mental health, For right? Sure. And I think we've been so conditioned over years to just accept that as a mental health problem. It's not a problem. It's just something we have to navigate through. It's just experiences that are just unhealed and we haven't mm -hmm. really tapped into. So I just want to start with first, let's relanguage that. Because um, ultimately, it'll make yourself feel better. Yeah. For sure. All right? When you keep, someone keeps telling you, you got a problem, you For got sure. an issue, yeah. whatever, you start to really believe in, like, damn. Yeah, like, what's <laughs> wrong? Like, what's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For like, sure. Am I crazy? And it's so yeah. scary. Yeah. I mean, like, I, like I, I tell people I'm crazy. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> it is a personality it's trait. It's just your trait. Um, <laughs> but, like, as scary as being diagnosed as bipolar was for me, it was also so relieving. Because mm. I finally had a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I finally was like, okay, this is how I can figure out how to be okay. Like, I like to say that me medicated is a little less fun, but a lot more productive. <laughs> 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 you know, so instead of it being a roller coaster, we're just kind of chilling. Just in the middle. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. Right in the <laughs> but, like, right. it changed, like, being diagnosed, it, like, it got to the point where I was like, okay, wow, I'll probably be a little bit further along in my career 
if I manage my mental health effectively. It was hard because I have always been this mental health advocate to look at myself and be like, yo, you telling people, oh, go to therapists, you know, or like figure out how to manage your mental health holistically, but acknowledge that it exists. And you hopping on and off meds, <laughs> like, yo. Mm -hmm. You know, so by the time when I got to the point where I could look at myself and say, without shame and say like, yo, you're bipolar and this is how we manage it. And that changed the game for me. And I, that, like, so when I tell my story, especially because you look at me, I'm six, seven, I'm six, five or 13. You don't see a victim, whatever that looks like, right? I'm bold, I, like you say. I always got a, I got a big mouth. I'm always cracking jokes. You don't look at me and be like, oh, something. You might say something might be wrong with her. But you don't think about it in the <laughs> clinical aspect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, so I think yeah. it's about having multiple pictures of what mental illness and mental health str struggles or problems, whatever you call it, looks like. It's about mm -hmm. having multiple pictures of what it looks like dealing with trauma because we see this one picture where it doesn't look like us. Mm -hmm. So we say it's not ours. Mm -hmm. Especially for me, like I, I'm, I grew up in a Southern Baptist house, so I'm a preacher's kid. Mental health like was, yeah, well, you yeah. go pray about it. That was a mm -hmm. white man's problem. Well, yeah. And too tired to be sick and tired. You, you know, you had all these things that allowed me not to tap into the fact that I needed to take care of myself and, and attach shame to the fact that I felt like I needed to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. So it's about, you know, being confident. And like we, you say, they do think of us as superheroes. Mm -hmm. So DeMar DeRozan, Aaron Gordon, mm -hmm. you know, Liz, mm -hmm. talking about these things. Kevin Love, this is this is how we change the stigma. Because mm -hmm. as much as you think I'm a superhero and I don't have any problems and I have everything you might deem to be the perfect life, mm -hmm. I still have to deal with this. Yeah. So if I deal with it, you probably deal with it too. And it's mm -hmm. a little easier to have that conversation. Essence said she brings balance to the table. What do you two bring to the table? First, I want to say thank you for calling me out on that because it does start with us, you know, changing the stigma of mental health. So thank you for that. Um, like that does. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, like correct She's me, like, like help me out, you know. What <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I bring energy to the table. You know, I'm I'm like bubbly, goofy, you know, loud like myself. So if I if I can't bring anything else to the table, like I'm going to have my energy. I'm going to be clapping on teammates. I'm going to be the loudest person probably in the crowd. You know, so well not in the crowd, but you know, like a part of cheering on everybody. That's gonna be me. So I just really think that's what I bring to the table. Yeah. I like that. Positive energy is that's always needed. Underrated. Right. She's a light. She's underrated, a light. bro. For real. Um, I like to say that I bring authenticity. You know what you're gonna get from money. Sure do. I'm gonna be this person day in, day out, whether I'm happy, sad, or indifferent. I'm gonna be this person. You know she will. You may not like it, and that's true. It might be ridiculous. <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> But at least you know that I'm coming from an authentic place at all yes. times. And I'm, if, even if my actions ain't moving the right way, my heart is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what you're getting. You know yeah. it. It's easier to manage when you know what you're, what you're dealing with. Love it. As we watch you guys in the AU inaugural season. So I can't wait. Thank you so much for your time. It's been great. Twenty-six is today. Yes, no. Happy birthday! You want to tell nobody? Okay, happy birthday! <laughs> happy birthday! Thank you. <laughs> Yeah.